Welcome to Booktopia TV. I'm John Purcell, and I'm here with New York Times best-selling author Jackie Collins to talk about her new book, Confessions of a Wild Child. Welcome, Jackie. Hi, how are you? Very well. Good. Pleasure to have you here. It's good to be here. I love Booktopia. I was doing a, a bit of research on you, and I was looking into the, the numbers, and they are staggering. Uh, 500 million books sold. That's half a billion. I think it sounds better as half a billion. It's crazy. Isn't it crazy? I mean, I am a school, well, I was expelled from school at 15. Everybody said, you can't be a writer, which is what I wanted to do more than anything. They said, you have to go to college, you have to get degrees, and I followed my dream. And that's my message to everybody out there, to follow their dream, because that's what I did. And 30 books later, here I am. And it, it, it's crazy. I mean, I have been doing it a long time, though. That's why I sold so many books, because over the years, and with 40 different countries, and all these different different, you know, uh, translations like Chinese and, and uh, you know, anywhere in the world, Polish, Russian. I'm very big in Russia, actually. <laughs> and so it adds up, it adds up, it adds up. Yeah, but it's pretty, it's pretty mind-blowing. Just on the Russian thing, were, were there any counterfeit copies that crossed over the border during the Cold War, do you know? No, not about, um, not about Russia, but about China. In China, they, they did uh, bootleg copies of Hollywood Wives, and they put out a million. I, of course, got nothing for it, and they sold them as though they were selling bread, and people were lining up to get the books. And then the secret police were sent out to seize the books, and there were none left. They'd sold them all, and then they threatened to execute the publishers. And this is a true story. Oh, my God. So but I don't know what happened. I didn't follow it after that, but it was in all the papers. So it makes sense, then, to pretty much credit you with the thawing of China and the... Yeah, I corrupted, I corrupted Chinese youth. Nice, very nice. <laughs> now I'm corrupting Russian youth. <laughs> <laughs> I always think of, of, of all the money that governments all over the world spend to try and encourage people to, to read and to, um, to be literate and to, 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 to buy books and the like. Yeah. And, I, and I think of your books, because every time I ask um, people about how they got started reading, uh, um, what, what led them to, to, to books, uh, especially on internet and Facebook and, and all these women come in saying the first book they read were their mother's Jackie Collins. I've heard that so many times, you know. Oh, I, I got my mum's, you know, uh, lucky and I went under the covers and I read it and you taught me everything I know about sex. And, you know, the thing is, I'm a storyteller. I'm not a literary writer and I've never pretended to be a literary writer. I'm a storyteller and I grab people with my characters and my story. And I have no idea what I'm going to write. I sit down with a pen and a title and I write in longhand and I still write in longhand hand 30 books later and I love what I do I have a passion for creating characters I have a passion for continuing this character of Lucky Sant'Angelo because my fans love her so much you know I mean I'm Jackie J Collins on on Twitter and they come to me all the time and say please please another book about Lucky another book about Lucky well Confessions of a Wild Child is like the eighth book about Lucky but it's it's the um, it's the early years. It's, it's, it's lucky. Her as, a, her as a fifteen year old, yeah, and a sixteen year old. I know, and I was able to draw very much of my own experiences being a wild child myself when I was that age. Oh, that, that leads <laughs> me straight into the discussion I've been dying to ask. Yes, Marlon Brando. There, there are discussions about um, uh, you meeting and and having a liaison with with Marlon Brando when you were in Hollywood uh, the first time. I think when you visited um, your sister. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, now you're going to have to read my autobiography, which will be called um, uh, Reform School or Hollywood, and then you'll read all about it. <laughs> is that being penned? I'm saving it for is that. Is that being penned? I, it is being penned, oh, yes. Good. It opens up with, um, don't move blank or I'll blow your blanking head off. <laughs> and that was actually said to me by a guy in a mask with an Uzi in my face. So I think it, instead of saying, oh, I was born in London, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah, I'm going to have incidents and then, you know, go a little back into my background and then have more incidents that happen because I've had so many fascinating things happen to me that I really don't talk about my personal life a lot so I think it'll be intriguing when people read my autobiography to see all these things that they know nothing about. Well, there, there, uh, I'd, I'd suggest that um, a close reading of your novels would would tease out a few, maybe, suggestions. Well, especially in Confessions of a Wild Child, because the Joan Le Pin, which is a little town outside of Cannes in the south of France, I spent many a long month there when I was 15, so. Had you escaped? <laughs> Did you run off? Uh, I actually was expelled, so I went to stay in the south of France because I had an aunt who lived there, but she wasn't there at the time, and I had the keys to her apartment, and Very the fleet like was in town, so I had a wonderful time. Very much like a <laughs> lucky then, isn't it? 
Yeah, I guess, you know, I guess I, I take inspiration from that character. I would love to be her in another life because a lucky Sant'Angelo does all the things that women would really like to do but they can't get away with. And she says all the things they would really like to say but they can't get away with it. And Lucky does it for them. She's like a James Bond for women and women need that strong character. Talking about strong character, can you describe what it, what it is for you to be a strong woman? It's doing things my way. You know, I, I really don't like to be edited. I like to write my books. I like to be left alone when I'm writing my books. I deliver a finished manuscript to my publisher. And they might have a few little comments, but not a lot. Because if I'm going to fail, I want to fail on my mistakes, not on somebody else's. And a lot of people have to justify their jobs. But I have brilliant editors who know to leave me alone. And, and they're, just, they're, they're just great. I love my editors. So with, um with Lucky's early story, yeah. um, you've written it in a style which is very accessible to younger readers. It's, is yeah. it, is it, would it be right to class it as a YA novel? Yeah, it was a YA novel. I wrote it as a YA novel and then I delivered it to my publishers and they went, no, 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 we can't do this as a YA novel. It's for everyone. It's for your fans. They're going to love this. And fortunately, they do. The people who've read it already are, are loving it. They're not going, oh, it's not as raunchy as usual. Yeah, it's raunchy in a different kind of way, you know. And I think it's great for teenagers, especially teenage girls, to read about how to navigate, you know, sex. And it, it's very kind of intricate in the book, the way that Lucky navigates sex and the way that Olympia, her somewhat older friend, who is the daughter of a Greek ship billionaire, um, she has a whole different attitude towards sex. Lucky is very street smart, and I wanted to show how she becomes the woman she is today. You could almost be a guide for, for um, helping young women through the, yeah, the, the reefs of, exactly. of, of, of adolescence. And then she has this crazed crush on Marco, yeah. who if you read the future books, um, you will see what happens. But I, I, you know, when I was 15, I had a crazed crush on an older guy. Marco is 30, she's 15. He doesn't give her the time of day, but all she can do is lust after him. And we all know that feeling, right? Yeah. And I wanted to create that feeling in the book. And then she almost gets attacked by a guy at one point in Las Vegas, and the way she deals with it is true Sant'Angelo style. Yeah, that came right through. Yeah, that, it did, that, didn't that, it? <laughs> that genesis of, of Lucky is right there through the book. Anyone who loves her will love this beginning. Yeah, I, I think it's a fun book. I think it's a fun book for everybody to read. And I had so much fun writing it. I loved writing it. And now I'm currently writing The Sant'Angelo's. So what, what book would you suggest you go straight on to? If, you, if you're a first time Jackie reader and you're reading Confessions, the next book... Oh, you have to read Chances. Uh, chances, on chances. Yeah, yeah, because Chances is where Gino, like his father, is born. And he's at the beginning of the last century. And he comes to America when he's 13. And he rises to become one of the biggest gangsters in America. He, he starts building hotels in Las Vegas. He goes through bootlegging. He, he does all those kind of things. And then eventually he gets married to this wonderful, gorgeous Maria who is murdered in the family swimming pool and Lucky discovers her body when she's five. And so it will take you a little bit back into Lucky's childhood, but it won't give you the whole story. So if you read, you know, Confessions of a Wild Child, you really have to then read Chances and then you can find out about Lucky's gay brother, Dario, who Lucky says to him when she finds out that he's 13, she's 15. And when she finds out, she says, whatever you do, do not tell Gino because he will not accept it because he's a macho, you know, Italian yeah, guy. Yeah, and so. No, exactly. So um, I, reading the book, I was thinking that somewhat, somewhat sadly that our era right now is kind of dull compared to the, the 60s, 70s and 80s and even the 90s. Uh, the, the, um, I suppose that the, the, the sharp contrast trust between um, maledom and female life at the time and the sexism and everything sort of yeah. gave everything a bit of an edge. Um, there was uh, also there was a, a real drive for women to experience life in its full. Um, it seems sometimes here in Australia especially that that battle seems to have been won right. and we're now safe to go back to suburbia and have children and, and live a very simple life without daring to experience life to the full as you might have done in the 60s or 70s. Yeah. Is that something you're coming across when you're writing? Well, one of the things I wanted to do in Confessions of a Wild Child was not put a time stamp on it. 
obviously it's not today because there's no technology in it and, yeah. and there's no references to anything popular going on. But I, mean I wanted, it, I wanted it to stand on its own. Yeah, yeah, I wanted it to stand completely on its own. So you don't know whether it is the 70s or the 80s because we didn't have technology really yeah. in a big way until the 80s. It was very freeing. I yeah. found it very freeing that I know. You know, the, the phone wasn't always exactly and that th th they weren't always looking for yeah because internet connection if you're around teenagers today you know everybody is on their iphone i mean or a, some kind of device yeah if they were they would miss out on the fun that um, lucky was having yeah and lucky Maybe was it, having it, it a great sound, time yeah, yeah. It's a, it really is a, about, about i mean getting out there and enjoying yourself but and also life. i think girls who read this book you know if they're teenagers 14 15 and just starting to think about you know boys and all of that they can understand a lot by reading this book and that and perhaps they can draw the strength of Lucky into themselves because that's my ambition is to make women stronger. Yeah. I love writing strong women and I want women to be stronger and I want women to have more respect for themselves because you know I have goddaughters and they drag me out to the clubs in LA and I look at these girls out there and they've got like skirts that look more like belts and they've got 10 inch Louboutins on and they're rolling around drunk and they fall into bed with the first guy that winks at them sideways and it's ridiculous you know nobody's going to have any respect for them they're going to be miserable so that there's there is a line isn't it so you can be yeah you can have, you have powerful sexuality you can, you can yeah and look great but you can you can control it you you can be the one in control I always think women should be in control and, and, and sex should be equal. One of the things I write about is a, a, an equal sexuality, not a guy scoring off a girl, or even a girl scoring off a guy, but an equal sexuality. And I think that's why people like the sex that I write, because it's very kind of... Yeah, well, well Lucky uh, is very aware that her friend is, is not an equal partner in yeah. what's going on in her life. Yeah, Olympia and is a, 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 a slut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, so there's, yeah. no, there's no respect anywhere in those, those relationships, and, and it... it constantly gets lucky thinking yes. about. Yes. Um, what I love about the book, and I know that I wrote it, and I shouldn't say I love anything about it, but I, because I loved writing it so much because I became the character as I was writing it, was when she finally gets to Vegas and Gino has this plan for her because she's run away from so many schools and she's been such a bad girl in his eyes. But when she gets to Vegas and she starts thinking about what he wants her to do, and the way her mindset is, well, I've got a choice, haven't I? I can do what he wants me to do or I can be sent off to another school. And she's smart enough to realize that freedom lies in the direction that he wants her to do. Yeah, I sorry. have to write a sequel because I leave it at such a, oh, a pivotal point. Yeah, and then there's another... Um, it's a very mature decision she makes. It's a very... Like, she's very, very mature. Yeah. Well, that's lucky, you see. Yeah. 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 Australia has, has always been cut off. It's, it's, long, it's a long way away from everything. Um, and your first book was banned here. It um, was banned. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and I was I was looking into um, some of the, uh, the stories of, of back then, and, and Barbara Cartland's reaction to you was I I, f I was amazed. Um, she was writing a lot of romance novels. Um, I don't know. I've never read a Barbara Cartland novel, but I, I, I assume that women aren't as strong as the women in your book. But she seems. Well, I'm I'm, I'm sure they weren't. But I was on a television show in I think it was Terry Wogan in London, and this woman was there who looked similar to the Queen Mother, and she had a, a, a lamp clamped between her knees, so she got fabulous lighting, and she said to the host, she said, Jackie Collins is responsible for all the perverts in England. And I turned to her and I said, oh, thank you. <laughs> well, what else do you say, you know? She was, you know, people were completely shocked by my first book, The World is Full of Married Men. As you said, it was banned in Australia. My publisher said to me when I delivered the book, take out all the four-letter words because otherwise we're going to be banned in Australia. And of course, I took out all the four-letter words, words and we were banned in Australia anyway. What was it you thought, you think about, uh, that would cause them to be banned here? Well, you know, it was 1968 and it was about the double standard and people did not have female writers writing about the double standard and the truth about married men and all of that and I think people were incensed because there was a, 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 a guy that was in the closet he was an actual politician and he wrote a half page in the Sunday paper and he said this is the most shocking book I've ever read not a four letter word in it but it was all about the double standard, and I guess he didn't like that. So it was number one within 10 days. So. Uh, I think you've solved the literacy problem in a lot of countries. You've, you've definitely solved China's problem. They're, they're now an economic powerhouse. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I suggest that you probably started um, Jermaine Greer's 
career. I mean, if she wouldn't have had access to your book, she would have been incensed by it. And there it goes. I mean, yeah, that's, that's there it goes. Modern feminism is also under exactly. your, your list exactly. of CVs. <laughs> yeah. You often say that you, you hear, overhear stories or people confess yeah. their stories to you. Um, famous movie stars, um, sports people. I mean, there was one you were talking about the other night I heard um, with uh, a sports star saying that he had a, a trice with three between with tri triplets. And oh, no, that was a rock star. Rock star. I wrote a book called Rock Star. Yeah. And I interviewed a lot of rock stars, and I knew a lot of them because my husband used to own nightclubs in London, and all the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and Eric Clapton all used to hang out there. So I would talk to all these guys all the time. I knew them all. And there was this one particular rock star, and I told him I was writing the book, and he said, i got to tell you the story about me in Chicago with these triplets. We went out on the lake, and it was fun. And he started to tell me the details. I said, all right, great. So I used the story, but I made it twins. And then I ran into him, and he goes, Huh? What happened? What happened to the triplets? And I said, you know what? Nobody would believe it. <laughs> and it's true, you know. I mean, if you, if you read some of the biographies by the rock stars, I could not make up their stories because they are so bizarre. And yet I threw in a few of them in rock star, and, you know, uh, critics said, oh, this is preposterous, this couldn't happen, you know. They have no idea. Yeah. So I write the truth. So you gave them the, 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 the a little bit down on, uh, from, yeah. from the truth to try and make them all believe it. Exactly. Them, yeah. Believe it. I have to turn the truth down, yeah. always. I'm sure people pitch books to you all the time. I'm going to pitch one to you. Prince Harry, have you written about his, his career or even, uh, you know, he's, he's had such a wonderful time in the last few years. I could write about him. He's not top of my list of what I'm going to write about next. But I could create, um, you know, I can look in a newspaper any day and I can see a two-line story and to me that's a book. Yeah. I, and I have like, you know, I'm, I'm writing the Sant'Angelo's now, then I want to write about Flynn from the power trip, bring him back, and I want him to be in Afghanistan, and, and, and I want to get into that kind of area as a photojournalist and make it very exciting. And then um, maybe I'll get back to Madison, which is a character I've written about in three books, and people are asking for her all the time. Do you have notebooks going in all directions? Do you have a desk with a, well, a circular I desk? <laughs> <laughs> I do, actually, yeah, because I write scripts, too. And uh, it, it's interesting. I have a lot of projects going. So, yeah, Harry is not top of my list, but he would be a good subject to write about. You're coming on the side sometimes. You know, the interesting thing is if I pick a subject, like if I picked you, I would know much more about you than you would know that I know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a trick that I have. Well, I'll have to read every single word you write now. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Jackie. Uh, it's been a pleasure to, to talk with you. Thank you, John. I enjoyed every minute of it. Jackie's new novel, Confessions of a Wild Child, is available at booktopia.com.au right now.